What is graphene? Why is it mentioned so many times by many YouTube tech channels? Well, graphene is a new material in which carbon atoms are tightly packed into a single layer two dimensional honeycomb lattice structure. Sounds too boring? Well, simply put, graphene has excellent optical, electrical, and mechanical properties, and is considered to be a revolutionary material in the future. On March 30, 2021, Huawei disclosed the graphene field effect transistor patent for the first time. Huawei is able to provide a graphene field effect transistor, which can improve the working efficiency of the chip by increasing the output resistance of the components. This will be a brand new start for China's domestic chips. In addition to Huawei's breakthrough in the field of graphene materials, the China Institute of Metals has produced vertical structure transistors, and China has also taken the lead in developing an 8-inch graphene single crystal wafer. With these efforts, making graphene chips is no longer an impossible dream. Some people may ask, aren't all silicon-based wafers now, what are graphene wafers? Is graphene really that amazing? What industrial revolutions will it bring? Hi, everyone. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. Let's put it this way, if the chip is compared to a house, the transistor is the building block, and the houses constitute our information society. In a word, the more transistors, the faster the chip will operate. The bricks used to make transistors were made of sand, or silicon. So, a graphene wafer is a transistor made of graphene, and then a chip based on that. Then, why do we study graphene wafers? The reason is that, limited by Moore's law, the current extreme limit of silicon material chips is almost 2 nanometers to 1.5 nanometers, and it will be difficult to make it smaller. Why can't it work? It is because of some characteristic limitations of silicon. If the transistor is too small, the probability of failure will increase sharply, and it is very difficult to coordinate the tens of billions of transistors in the chip to work together. So, how to solve this problem? Well, it is to replace silicon with carbon to make transistors. In fact, this is related to the many high-quality properties of carbon. Carbon transistors consume less power and are more efficient than silicon. For example, a transistor made of carbon nanotubes has an electron mobility 1000 times that of silicon. Generally speaking, the mass base of electrons in carbon materials is better. For another example, the free path of electrons in carbon nanotubes is very long. The popular understanding is that electrons move more freely and are not easy to rub and generate heat. Because of these advantages, a transistor made of carbon can achieve the same level of performance without even being as small as a silicon transistor. Judging from the currently mastered technology, carbon-based chips are expected to advance integrated circuit technology to below the 3 nanometer node, and the performance will exceed silicon-based chips by more than 10 times. Moreover, in addition to the lower power consumption and higher efficiency of carbon transistors, there is an extra benefit for China to develop carbon transistors. That is, the entire chip production technology need a reconstruction, and everyone returns to the starting line. The lithography machine that used to torture China can also be bypassed. The semiconductor industry is a marvel in the human industry. For silicon transistors produced with sand, the number of internal transistors doubles every 18 months. The United States has been developing for nearly 70 years. In terms of chip technology, it is indeed very hard to completely de Americanize. However, with carbon based chips, it is different. This is a qualitative change in technology. No matter how big the previous gap is, everything starts from scratch. New chip raw materials call for new processes, and the role of current chip making equipment may be greatly weakened. The latest R&D advantages that China has now mastered have also recently emerged. So, what advantages does China currently have? Firstly, China's carbon-based semiconductor research is at the leading level in the world. For example, Peng Lianmao's team from Peking University began to explore the method of preparing integrated circuits with carbon nanotube materials since 2000 and achieved great results along the way. In January 2017, Peng Lianmao led his team to develop a high-performance 5-nanometer carbon nanotube, 
which is the smallest high-performance transistor in the world so far. Its comprehensive performance is 10 times higher than that of the current best silicon-based transistor, and is better than that of American technology. This year, Peng Lian Mao's team has developed a new purification and self-assembly method, and used this method to prepare carbon nanotube materials with high-density, high-purity semiconductor arrays. Secondly, China's graphene development technology is also ahead of the world. Graphene is known as the lightest, strongest and thinnest material in the world. At present, the production of carbon nanotubes is made by graphene. In recent years, China has carried out a lot of research in the field of graphene, ranking among the first in the field of graphene research in the world, and the total number of patent applications in the world is the first in the world, followed by the United States, South Korea, and Japan. At present, the overall industry chain of China's chip technology is facing a situation of being restricted. The key reason is that China lacks core technologies in the field of chip technology. The development of China's graphene wafers is to start from the material and advance in a circle to fully grasp the chip technology. At the same time, it is very difficult to upgrade global chip technology now. At present, the 2 nanometers and even 1 nanometer processes of TSMC and Intel are not progressing smoothly. TSMC's 3 nanometers process was originally expected to be mass produced in the second half of this year and produce A15 processors for Apple's foundry. However, as Apple's A15 processors finally chose N5P, it seems that the mass production of TSMC's 3 nanometers process may be delayed again and fail to catch up with the mass production time of the A15 processor. The 3 nanometers process is considered to be the limit of the current FinFET technology. TSMC's 3 nanometers process still uses FinFET technology, while Samsung has introduced GAA technology for 3 nanometers. This gives Samsung a lead in the 3 nanometers process and is expected to lead in the more advanced 2 nanometers process. However, as mentioned above, both TSMC and Samsung's 3 nanometers process are facing mass production problems, which means that their 2 nanometers and even more advanced processes are facing technical difficulties. The industry knows that the current limit of silicon-based chips is 1 nanometer. Therefore, after the 3 nanometers process, it is very close to the limit of silicon-based chips. It is no wonder that their advanced processes face technical difficulties in mass production. As we all know, the key equipment affecting chip manufacturers, such as TSMC to upgrade advanced processes is the second-generation EUV lithography machine. However, ASML said that the second-generation EUV lithography machine could be mass-produced in 2025 at the soonest, and the first second-generation EUV lithography machine would be delivered to Intel first. However, ASML had problems with delayed delivery. This means it is unlikely that the second-generation EUV will be ready for mass production in 2025. Therefore, the study of graphene wafers has become a new trend in the development of semiconductors in the future. We will continue to pay attention to China's breakthroughs in this field. Please continue to pay attention to us. Okay, that's all for today. Your likes and views are the encouragement that we can move on more videos in the future. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. Goodbye.